Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the show and hope you guys are having a good morning. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with episode nine of our Audible login series. Uh, today we are going to be talking about how to actually create a protocol and why it's kind of important to use uh, protocols inside of Swift. So let's begin with what our application currently looks like. And I'm gonna show you guys how to transform it using a protocol. So uh, on my screen inside of the simulator, we have uh, the current application that is showing a kind of a fake view of what the Audible app does. And uh, in order to kind of show you guys what we want to do today, I'm going to go into main navigation controller. I'm gonna to toggle this is logged in function to return a false instead of a true. So I'm gonna run the application now. And this means that we're simulating a user that is not logged in and hence, the simulator will show the entire login guide with all of these pages here. And if I had to skip, it goes to the last uh, last page, and any login should dismiss this actual login component. In other words, let me show you what that looks like. We have our somewhat completed application here. I'm gonna sign out. And if I slide to the last page, hit the login button, you'll see the actual dismissal of this entire component. So that's uh, what we want to implement today. And I'm showing you guys how to do that. So let's drag this guy over here. And the idea, so the idea for today's video is to actually write out our own protocol class and then actually implement this inside of a controller and then later uh, specifying this as a delegate inside of one of our cells. So that's going to be the takeaway for today. I hope you guys are kind of excited to get started. All right, so the first thing we want to do is to actually uh, look at what is going on here. So if I run the application, you're gonna see the login component. And one way to kind of start out today's video is to go into login controller. And at the very bottom, let's just say near the self or item at index path method, I'm going to create this function called uh, finish logging in like that. I'm gonna try to print uh, finish logging in from login controller. So that's what this print statement will print out. And the question now is, where do I actually call this finish login method? And the idea is, uh, inside of our login component, we have three pages of uh, kind of login uh, text. And the very log uh, last login cell contains this login button. So login cell is this class right here. And this is how we're rendering the logo the image view, the couple of text fields, and the button at the very bottom. And that's how that works. So how do I call this login controller method, uh, finish logging in, from this login cell? Well, there's a couple of ways of doing it, so I'm gonna show you guys how to set this up uh, initially without a protocol, and then we'll, we'll establish one uh, in the next couple of minutes. Okay, so let's uh, get started here. Login button. We want to actually modify this so that we can handle the touch up inside uh, control event. And let's just use add target with a target of self. Selector will be called uh, handle, let's see, handle login like that. And this will be touch up inside. Okay. So a couple of things you need to establish before this works out is to set this function here called handle login. And this will actually handle the touching of this button right here. And next, you need to specify lazy var as the actual login button instance type. Okay, so with this in place, let's just do print one, two, three. And this is a good kind of good practice to confirm that your code is actually working. Just make sure uh, upon performing the action, a statement gets printed in the console. In other words, I'm gonna hit skip, hit the login down here. You see one, two, three. So this means that our code is being executed properly. So print statements are always very helpful to have in your code as you're developing. Uh, anyhow, let's move on to actually calling this login controller method called finish logging in. So back to login cell. I want to be able to call something like login controller and we want to call something perhaps uh, the actual method of finish logging in like that. And here we go. So there's going to be a compiler error there. And the reason is because this class does not contain a login controller instance. 
And the way to fix this is to establish one right off the bat with a var login controller of type login controller optional. The reason why I use optional is because you want to initialize this object as a nil object. So I'll click on this little helper dot. And let's see, that is not what we want. So instead we want to just say question mark as our optional. And now we can run the application and you'll see what happens if I put a breakpoint line 49. I hit the login button on our last page like this. It executes uh, login controller finish logging in. And if I hit the play button, you'll notice that this method right here, if I command click into it, it's not printing what I want into the console. And the reason is because of this. So back into the breakpoint, you see that login controller is actually a nil object. So when you call a method on a nil object, it basically does nothing. And the nice part about this uh, Swift syntax is that it doesn't actually crash your application. So the way to execute finish logging in is to establish the actual login controller in our cell. <sighs> okay, so going back to login controller right here, we have this method called cell for item at index path. And let's just hit the play button right here. So remember in the very first couple of videos, we're rendering all our cells inside of this method here. And the idea is inside of this little if block right here, we know that we are, say we're rendering our last login cell here. And we want to cast this login cell guy as the login cell class itself by saying as bang login cell. There we go. Login cell now has this property on it called login controller. You just set it equal to self. So I'm going to run the application and you're going to see this print statement in the console whenever I tap on that login button inside of this cell here. So tap, you'll see that. And that's kind of how this uh, delegation of work, uh, how it's kind of implemented in our application right now. So the last thing to do before I kind of uh, handle the implementation of the protocol is to actually dismiss this entire controller. So that's quite simple. And let's do that right here. If I go back to finish logging in, I can just call dismiss with animation of true and a completion block of nil because we don't really care so much about the completion of the dismissal. So application is launching and it goes to the last page, hit the login. You'll see that the entire controller gets dismissed and that's pretty nice. So uh, what do we want to do with this blank white screen is the current question. And we'll perhaps implement the home controller a little later. Uh, let's see how much time we have in this video today. Um, anyhow, I want to now get into the idea of a protocol and why we want to use it inside of Swift. So the first thing you want to actually do is you just run the application and I'm going to go back to login cell right here. And if I go into line 49 and if I type login controller, uh, let me try to illustrate to you why a protocol is important. So login controller, I can actually access everything on the login controller. And essentially what this means is that login cell knows a whole lot about the actual parent uh, or the login controller class, uh, where in our case, we don't really need to know so much about the parent. And inside of, I guess in software development, you wanna make sure your components are kind of as, as, as dumb that make sure they're very, very stupid in terms of what they know and what they don't know. So basically very unintelligent objects. In other words, I don't want to be able to say login controller collection view, uh, access all these methods, keyboard hide. So all of this doesn't really make sense in the context of the login cell. And hence, this is why we establish something called a protocol. And how do we create a protocol, right? Well, there's a couple of ways of doing this, and uh, sometimes you'll see this in a different file, but in other, uh, even inside of UIKit and Apple's documentation, you'll see protocols inside of the actual class itself. And we don't want to specify a class. We want to create this protocol right here by just typing protocol. And I'll just call this login controller delegate. And you'll see this common naming pattern inside of UIKit itself. And inside of requirements, we'll just use function of 
finish, let's see, finish logging in. Okay, and let me just hit a one right here. Okay, and I'll show you why right now. So if I have this delegate, my classes can now conform to this delegate. And what this means is I have to implement this function called finish logging in one. And if I just type in a login controller delegate up here, this class now uh, guarantees that I have this implement or this function implemented. And the reason why we have this little dot here is because it's saying I don't have this finish logging in one method implemented. So it kind of tells me to do that in this gray little uh, autocomplete there. And the idea is if I just remove the one, everything should be okay. I just hit build. Okay. And the reason why it's okay now is because if I find this little function guy down here, I've already implemented this specific method before. Uh, so things just kind of conveniently worked as I've planned out the tutorial today. And uh, now let's move on to the actual question of why or how do we actually use this delegate guy now? And the idea is if you go into the login cell and you go down next to this login controller, you can specify that something called a delegate and let it be a class of login controller delegate. And let's make that an optional again. And going back down to handle login, if you say it delegate dot, uh, just dot and let the autocomplete show you what is possible, you'll see that there's only a couple of very simple things you can actually perform on this delegate object. And one of which is the actual finish logging in method. So you don't have access to collection view. You don't have access to the keyboard stuff. And this is very important to make sure your components stay very, very isolated and just perform what they need to perform. And here we go. So double clicking on that, we get the optional coming in. And if we, let's say, comment this guy out, and then we want to actually comment this out as well. If you build a project, you'll get one compiler error in here at the very bottom. And then you actually need to comment that up and say login cell dot delegate equals cell. So you have to make sure that the delegate is set just like how we set up the login controller. Okay, so now that the login delegate is set up properly, let's go ahead and run the application and see what the behavior looks like. It should be just as uh, what it was before. So I'm gonna hit the skip login cell, I hit the login, and then the whole dismissal occurs because delegate right here so the delegate is calling finish logging in which dismisses the controller so with this in place i can just remove these uh references for the login controller and let's go back to login cell and let's see actually let's go to login controller here and remove this last comment and i just like remove my comments because comments make my code a little bit difficult to read uh, at least in my opinion. And finally, I want to talk about uh, something called a retain cycle, maybe. Uh, <laughs> so retain cycles, uh, the idea of a retain cycle is a pretty heavy topic, and I won't be able to explain to you what that is in this video. So I'm going to show you what you need to do to avoid a retain cycle inside of Swift. And the idea is inside of the login cell class, you have a delegate which points to the login controller and the login controller actually knows about all the login cells. In other words, both of these components point to each other right now, hence we have this retain cycle. So make sure to do some more research on what that means and perhaps I'll do a video on that later on. And to avoid this uh, retain cycle, you have to do something like this. So you have to establish something called a a weak variable, and this just breaks the uh, the retain cycle for you. And uh, you can't really perform this weak right here because uh, delegates uh, need to actually be specified as a class instead of just a plain old uh, protocol. So in other words, just type in class right there. And now you know, or you're telling the compiler that everything that implements this login controller delegate protocol is an actual class itself and it's not an enum or it's not a struct. So that's how this kind of works. If you run the application, everything still looks just the same. Um, nothing that you wouldn't expect it to do. 
And so we're running the application now. We get login, everything looks okay. And uh, finally, <laughs> one last thing before I let you guys go here is to implement this little dismissal guy right here. And if I go to finish logging in inside of logging controller, like I was promising you guys a little earlier, you can actually show the home controller when you dismiss the entire login component by doing something like this. Um, so first of all, the application has a main window and the idea of this main window, uh, you can access it inside of your application like this. So I'm gonna say let root view controller. So I'm gonna get the root view controller off my main window. And I'm gonna say let uh, root view controller equals UI application, shared application, uh, key window. Key window gives me the actual window of my application. And inside of key window, you have this property called root view controller. And this right here just simply returns a UI view controller class. And uh, what I can do now is I can use a guard statement. Hope you guys know what a guard statement does. I can cast it down to what I know it actually is. So I actually know that this is a, uh, a main navigation controller class, which we created here. So let me just go back here. I can say guard let main navigation controller equals root view controller as, so we're gonna cast it down as an optional main navigation controller. I wanna say else return. Finally down here, uh, I can say view controllers on my main nav controller equals this array of controllers. And inside of here, I'm just going to say home controller. So a lot of code to unwrap here. I don't wanna go into this, uh, that, uh, into too much detail. So let's see what this does right here. If I click on the login button, we'll see the actual home controller as our uh, view behind the login component. So quickly, how does this work? Well, the guard statement just tells me, okay, all the lines below the guard, uh, I will only execute if I have this statement right here being true. So that's kind of how a guard statement works. Uh, main navigation controller is a nav controller has a property on it called view controllers. Whatever you specify as that array will be rendered as the actual navigational stack. In our case, home controller is the very first controller of the array. And that's why we see the fake home controller, which is this class right here, which contains the where logged in title at the top. And then this fake image that uh, kind of renders what the Audible app looks like. And that's kind of it. Okay, thank you guys for watching today. Hope you guys learned a little bit more about protocols and why they're kind of important to use inside of your application. Uh, make sure to hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, lastly, the code for today's project is available in the description. Make sure to go ahead and check that out. Download the project, play around with the code to see what works for you and what doesn't. And that's going to be it for me. Hope you guys keep on coding and I'll see you next time. Bye.